It's a very good evening from Toon to us. Today we are looking at the recently released CRJ 550-700 from Aerosoft. Both models are available to fly in one purchase, the difference predominantly being that the 550 carries 50 passengers while the slightly larger 700 carries 68 passengers. Included with the 550 and 700 models are nine liveries, including United Express, Air France, American Eagle, Alaska Airlines, Delta Connection, and a few others. The CRJ can be quite a demanding aircraft to control due to the lack of auto throttle. This leads to a more hands-on experience. Now firing up from a cold and dark state we switch the battery master on and switch off any master warnings on the dash. Cockpit displays in the simulator can be popped for easy visual checks which in this case checking the fire detection monitor test as you can see it pops up on the top of the list just saying the check was complete next we switch the APU power and fuel on opens the door of the APU and we click the APU start stop which after several seconds should go green see the dials rising to show that the APU has started and the message at the bottom of the screen saying the APU door is open Next we go back to the upper panel and we, from left to right we put hydraulic pump number 2 on. To assist starting the aircraft up, there is a helpful on-screen checklist. There are also on-screen tabs to control aircraft exits, performance inputs and a wealth of options to set up the aircraft to suit the user. At this point fuel can be inputted as well as passenger numbers and cargo weights. This would be a good point to contact uh, traffic control and switch it to ADIS. 
And this is where we can get weather settings, wind settings, recommended runways, and our barometer settings. Well, dropping down to the radio panel, we can switch both IRS switches to NAV. And now it's time to go into the FMS and set up our flight plan. First, going to pause in it. Type in the ICAO departure code and copy and paste it to let the computer know exactly where we are on the runway. switch on the navigation lights just to let each, everybody outside the aircraft know that the aircraft is now live. We turn into the FMC. We can now load our Simbri flight plan. Now we're going to run through the flight plan, check in departure and arrival, SIDS and STARS. Uh, run through the legs, remove any discontinuities or vectors. And input our performance initializations, such as flight level, cruising height, and winds, temperatures. Save flight plans from Simbrief would be saved in the work folder of the CRJ550-700 within Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today's flight is a very short flight from Chambry in France, just across the border to Geneva in Switzerland. It's not the length of flight that you would normally use a CRJ 700 for, but it was just to briefly run through the startup procedure.
complete the rest of the performance information, you can pop across to the EFB, click under the performance. If you then input the zero fuel weight and the block fuel, which comes from the Simbri flight plan, this can then be transferred into the FMS to save input and everything twice. Well, there is a slight bug on the program at the moment where the set payload to sim seems to be have to be pressed twice for it actually to balance the weights. I'm sure this will be ironed out in future updates. As you notice when the button's pressed, you get a slight movement outside as the weight of the fuel is put on the aircraft, indicating that it has been activated correctly. And a quick check back into the FMS just to make sure that these figures are correct and have been transferred. The climb, cruise and descent winds can now be inputted. However, on this short flight we can look at the sim brief plan and get an average wind condition which is minus 2, which can be inputted into the cruise. The ISA dev can be taken from the Simbrief plan, which is the average ISA. Which is P4 or positive 4. Once again, each step executed. On the next page, if there's a slight delay in the flight, you can actually change. This is where you can change the, the new departure time, which would then inform air traffic control and the passengers that there'll be a slight delay. Trans altitude is again dependent on which country or which airport that you're departing or arriving to. As a general rule, uh, Europe is around about 5,000 feet, the UK is around about 6,000 feet, while the US is 18,000 feet. Okay, the descent, the trans altitude is correctly inputted as per the plans. In this case a trans of 7,000 feet. Uh, flex temperature um, can be calculated, but on average 46 there or thereabouts will do on most aircraft on most airports. Again, there's an option for the pilot and the co pilot on the display screen whether to have the VNAVs or a selection of information available and moving on to the radio page the nav one can be set for the arrival airport which again is taken from the flight plans
and as a final standard procedure the flight plan can be stepped through waypoint by waypoint just to make sure that the flight plan looks correct and there are no breaks or discontinuities Going back to the EFB, we can see our trim setting, which can be corrected by the flight controls. And just behind the co pilot seat. In the top corner there is a refuel panel check which can be switched on and from here we can adjust the fuel required for the flight and just check that we have enough fuel to complete the flight and if not it can be added or deducted and the fuel trip can be called to the aircraft to add any additional fuel but in this case we have a preset of 5715 pounds which is sufficient fuel for the short journey and next on the pilot's arm we have uh, an oxygen test to ensure that the oxygen is being correctly monitored and sent through to the masks. There is also a sky cam test which can check through each of the cameras on the plane to ensure that doors are shut, um, aisles aren't blocked, passengers are seated. Now it's back to the overhead panel where hydraulics 1, 3 and 4 are set to auto. Now it's time to set the cabin pressure which will be set at the landing elevation. Again can be found from Naviglass plans what the elevation of the runway that's going to be arrived. Again, the pop-out window is quite helpful when adjusting this setting, rather than having to quick glance, keep glancing down to the dash. And we can then switch the air conditioning fan on and adjust the dials, which again are shown on the pop-out display. We can run an anti-ice test before setting the windshield heaters left and right both to low or dependent on conditions. And finally we will switch on the seat belt morning nights and emergency lights will be set to warm. Flight slow. And moving back out of the main dash, we can run a stall test, Windshear. which will run through Windshear. all pre-recorded emergency Current sounds. In off. Sink rate. Pull up. Terrain. While Pull running through up. these sounds, we can Don't sink. Don't sink. arm the nose wheel. Too low. Terrain. Too low. Gear. Too low. Flaps. 
too low terrain slide slow good and sure all the lighting angle. is moved up Minimum. dependent on conditions 1000 500 400 300 200 100 50 40 30 20 I'm just checking that the BRG is on Wind FMS1, the TFC is on, Too low. the radar terrain doesn't work Caution. at the moment terrain. but as a Caution. standard terrain. procedure you would switch it on now. Terrain. Terrain. Pull up. We then have the decision height Obstacle. or the Caution. MDA Obstacle. which can Obstacle. be set. Obstacle. Pull up. There's also an RA test which can be pushed. And we have a voice recorder which is held in for five seconds, which should show green light if the voice recorder is working. And moving into the center console, we can make sure that the anti-skid is armed. Do an MLGB test. An overheat test and a lamp one two test to test all the lamps are working on the displays. Quick check that the spoilers are armed and the thrust, thrust reversers are armed. And go down to the radio panel and do a TCAS test. Move down and switch the standby radio to standby. We can just press the stop trim buttons and then press the Mac trim button on till the light is extinguished. And then do a yaw damper test. Procedure will be to press the yaw damper 1, then the yaw damper 2, and press the disc, then the yaw damper 2 and the yaw damper 1. And this is confirmed on the pop out display. Again, two displays can be actually popped out jointly together. We'll just swear we're down here, we'll put our flaps down to 8, which is our takeoff level. This can be con confirmed on the AFB, flaps 8, and the runway condition can be set to whatever the weather is. And then the set all button is pressed to transfer, transfer all this information into the aircraft. It'd be a good time to close all the doors now and remove the chocks as we are getting ready to start the engines. And this, all that is required is a TC uh, for an IFR clearance. 
Chambery Tower Orbit 9 or 9 or 9 or IAC Mark to Geneva ready to copy. Orbit 9 or 9 or 9 is cleared to Geneva Airport as filed. Take off runway 36 climb and maintain 7,000 feet. Departure frequency is 124 decimal 5 squawk 7471. With this information, we can set the altitude and confirm and check that our score code is inputted into the radio. If the incorrect score code is not input from the radio, then contact with aircraft traffic control would not work. Ensure that the correct frequency is inputted. Chambery ground orbit nine or nine or nine or with Charlie ready to taxi IFR. Orbit nine or nine or nine or taxi to and hold short of runway three six using taxiway Sierra. Contact tower on one one eight decimal three when ready. At this point, we can switch the flight director buttons on. Taxi to and hold short runway three six by a taxiway Sierra orbit nine or nine or nine or. A good time to switch on the beacon light, which warns everybody outside the plane that you're about to start your engines. The boost pumps left and right will be switched on. This releases the fuel. Uh, if a pushback is available, then now would be a time to begin the pushback. But unfortunately, in this section of the airport, there is no pushback at the moment, so we will have to manoeuvre the plane ourselves. To start the engines of the CRJ700, the right engine is switched on on the overhead. Um, just to check to see that the gauge has moved up to 20%. Once 20% is reached, the red fuel flow switch on the right engine is switched on and the throttle on the right side is moved to idle. Once the right engine has started, we can repeat the same on the left engine. During an emergency, please remain in your seats with your seat belts fastened and your seats in the upright position. In case of a drop in cabin pressure, breathing masks will drop from the seat. So that's a left engine start. Or we'll wait until the dial reaches 20. And press the red fuel flow on the left, and the left throttle moves up to idle.
And moving back to the overhead panel, we switch the X-Flow override on. Once the engines are up and running at a 100%, we can press the APU start-stop to the off position and the APU power fuel to the off position. Good time now to put any anti-ice on if required. We also would put the left and right hand probes to the on position. And now it's taxi time. With the taxi light switched on, and we can, as an optional, we'll go back to the FMS and put a 25 mile fix onto the radar screens just to help us with our arrival to ensure that we're at the correct heights. That's a taxi to the runway. Chambery Tower Orbit Niner 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 at Runway 36 ready for takeoff IACR to Geneva. Orbit Niner 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 cleared for takeoff Runway 36. Cleared for takeoff Runway 36 Orbit Niner Niner And with clearance to takeoff, we can switch the strobes on on the takeoff lights. Um, we're going to manoeuvre as far up the runway as we can um, because this is quite a short runway for quite a, a large plane. Once we're reaching our V rate, uh, the gear will go up. We're going to lift the flaps, and put the nav on, the V nav. Set our rate for climb and pop the autopilot on. As mentioned, the CRJ700 does not have an auto throttle, so all throttle maneuvers must be done by hand, which can be quite challenging because it seems to have quite a slow reaction if you move the throttle forward. It seems to be a few seconds before the engines react. So you have to think one step ahead and enjoy the flight.
Geneva Tower orbit 9 or 9 or 9 or 1 6 miles southwest inbound ILS runway 04 approach. Orbit 9 or 9 or 9 or Geneva Tower. Cleared ILS runway 04 approach. Altimeter 29 or decimal 9 or 4 wind tree 19 or at 7. Cleared ILS runway 04 approach orbit 9 or 9 or 9 or. Orbit Niner, 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 clear to land runway 04. Wind 04, eight at tree. Clear to land runway 04, orbit Niner, Niner, Niner. Minimums. 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 Five minimums. Minimums. Four hundred. Minimums. 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 Two hundred. Minimums. One.
one hundred minimums fifty forty thirty twenty ten Decimal six eight orbit nine or nine or nine or Geneva ground orbit niner 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 request taxi to parking. Orbit niner 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 taxi to general aviation parking by taxiway alpha. Taxiing to general aviation parking by a taxiway alpha orbit niner niner niner. 